Today we're doing a deep dive into the bard subclass that looks beyond the College of Spirits. We start off with Guiding Whispers. At third level, you can reach out to spirits to guide you and others. You learn the Guidance Cantrip, which doesn't count against the number of bard cantrips you know. For you, it has a range of 60 feet when you cast it. The Guidance Cantrip is great one of the best cantrips in the game, casting it all the time outside of combat, and with 60 feet just gives you a little bit more variety of what you can do with it. I still don't think you'll be casting it in combat often, if ever, but that 60 feet still can't come into play outside of combat. Also at third level, we get spiritual focus. You employ tools that aid you in channeling spirits, be they historical figures or fictional archetypes. You can use the following objects as a spell casting focus for your bard spells. A candle, crystal ball, skull, spirit board, or taroka deck. Starting at sixth level, when you cast a bard spell that deals damage or restores hit points through the spiritual focus, roll a d6 and you gain a bonus to one damage or healing roll of this spell equal to the number rolled. We're kind of beginning to specialize here as a little bit more of a blaster and a little bit more of a healer than other bards. Most bards are focused on debuffing and so we kind of have a niche outside of that debuffing playstyle that we may or may not take advantage of. But in its worst case scenario, if we're playing exactly like a bard does, we're often going to have healing word and this just makes healing word a little bit better. And on top of that, if we're using a cantrip, this is going to make it a little bit better as well. So with this bard in particular, it's going to really behoove us to make sure we have good damaging cantrips so taking a race that gives us a good damaging cantrip is going to be really beneficial here. Also, at third level, we usually only get two features here. This is nice that we get our third. We get tells from beyond. You reach out to spirits who tell their tells through you. While you are holding your spiritual focus, you can use a bonus action to expend one use of your bardic inspiration and roll on the spirit tells table using your bardic inspiration die to determine the tell the spirits direct you to tell. You retain the tell in mind until you bestow the tell's effect or you finish a short or long rest. You can use an action to choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you, this can be you, to be the target of the tell's effect. Once you do so, you can't bestow the tell's effect again until you roll it again. You can retain only one of these tells in mind at a time, and rolling on the spirit tell's table immediately ends the effect of the previous tell. If the tell requires a saving throw, the DC equals your spell save DC. So what's kind of cool is that the tells as we grow our bardic inspiration dice, it also increases the number of tells we can get. So there are some tells that we're, we're not going to get until very, very late game, and those are represented the, by the later numbers, like 12, you're not getting until late. However, you know, 1 through 6, you're getting right from the beginning, so keep that in mind. Number 1 is Tale of the Clever Animal. For the next 10 minutes, whenever the target makes an intelligence, a wisdom, or a charisma check, the target can roll an extra die immediately after rolling the d20 and add the extra dice die's number to the check. The extra die is the same type as your bardic inspiration die. Number 2, Tale of the Renowned Duelist. You make a melee spell attack against the target. On a hit, the target takes force damage equal to 2 rolls of your bardic inspiration die plus your charisma modifier. Number 3, Tale of the Beloved Friends. The target and another creature of its choice it can see within 5 feet of it gains temporary hit points equal to the roll of your bardic inspiration dice plus your charisma modifier. Number four is tell of the runaway. The target can immediately use its reaction to teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space it can see. When the target teleports, it can choose a number of creatures it can see within 30 feet of it up to its charisma modifier, a minimum of zero, to immediately use the same reaction. Number five, tell of the avenger. For one minute, any creature that hits the target with a melee attack takes force damage equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration dice. Number six is tell of the traveler. The target gains temporary hit points equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration dice plus your bard level. While it has these temporary hit points, the target's walking speed increases by 10 feet and it gains a plus one bonus to its AC. Number seven, tell of the beguiler. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take psychic damage equal to two rolls of your bardic inspiration die and the target is incapacitated capacitated until the end of its next turn. 8. Tell of the Phantom. The target becomes invisible until the end of its next turn or until it hits a creature with an attack. If it hits a creature with an attack during this invisibility, the creature it hits takes necrotic damage equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die and is frightened of the target until the end of the frightened creature's next turn. Number 9 is Tell of the Brute. Each creature of the target's choice it can see within 30 feet of it must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes thunder damage equal to 3 rolls of your bardic inspiration die and is knocked prone. A creature that succeeds on its saving throw takes half damage and isn't knocked.
attack prone. Number 10 is Tell of the Dragon. The target spews fire from the mouth in a 30 foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw, taking fire damage equal to 4 rolls of your bardic inspiration die on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Number 11 is Tell of the Angel. The target regains hit points equal to 2 rolls of, the, of your bardic inspiration die, plus your charisma modifier. And you end one condition from the following list affecting the target. Blinded, deafened, paralyzed, petrified, or poisoned. Number 12 is Tell of the Mindbender. You invoke an incomprehensible fable from an otherworldly being. The target must succeed on an intelligence saving throw or take psychic damage equal to three rolls of your bardic inspiration die and be stunned until the end of its next turn. Really, really interesting feature here with a lot to really dive into. First and foremost, the cost here is a bonus action to expend a use of our bardic inspiration and then an action to activate whatever we rolled. So when, when we're rolling, we have a lot of randomness. And the question is, how often is our roll going to be more useful than just a standard bardic inspiration? And my answer is often enough, that I do think that you open up the day by expending a bardic inspiration to find out what you have. Now, depending on what you have, now you have to use an action to enable it. So it either needs to be powerful, if we're going to use it in combat, it needs to be useful out of combat, or just have a really long time frame. The one that gives us temporary hit points and plus AC is a good one that we could just use on our ally. Now I see us holding one for a couple different reasons. It's powerful in combat or it's just bad and we don't want to use our action. I would say don't be afraid of holding it. If your action is going to be better and you're stuck in combat, don't worry about it. Just don't use it and focus on using your normal bardic inspirations and your and your normal actions. I think this goes along with the theme of bards and bardic inspiration that there's a lot of skill involved here. There's a lot of skill in deciding when to use this on who, at what point, that's just so cool, and the randomness really has to keep you on your toes. It's really hard for me to say what to do here because it's so situational. Let's roll a d12 and do an example. So I just rolled a d12 and I got a 12. So this is going to be only late game that we would ever be able to pull this off, but we got Tell of the Mindbender. Now Tell of the Mindbender is really strong in combat because we use an action and it potentially does 3d12 of damage damage and stuns a target. But is that as good as our fight winning spells? No. So in combat, we're not going to be eager about using this. We're going to want to set up our combat with a fight winning spell. And if the combat continues past that, well, maybe instead of using a cantrip, I would use this then. So that's just one example. Let's do another one. So we got a two there. Tell of the renowned duelist. You make a melee spell attack against the target. On a hit, the target takes force damage equal to two rolls of your bardic inspiration die plus your charisma modifier. So now I need to be in melee and I need to use an action to do 2d6 damage here, assuming we're at a, a lower level. Here, I would basically never want to use this because I never want to be in that position. It's like, if I'm in that position, I'm trying to get out of that position, and that's how I'll be spending my actions. So this would be one of the ones that I could see myself totally holding. So I roll in and go, oh, never mind. I don't actually want to use that, so forget about it. I'm going to focus on just being a normal bard at this point. I hope that makes sense. I think the key takeaways are don't be afraid to hold it. If you can use it early, do. Really cool feature, really flavorful. So much you can do here. Big fan of its flavor. More than anything, big fan of its flavor, and I think the mechanics are cool. At 6th level, we pick up Spirit Session. Spirits provide you with supernatural insight. You can conduct a one hour long ritual channeling spirits, which can be done during a short or long rest using your spiritual focus. You can conduct the ritual with a number of willing creatures equal to your proficiency bonus, including yourself. At the end of the ritual, you temporarily learn one spell of your choice from any class. The spell you choose must be of a level equal to the number of creatures that conducted the ritual or less. The spell must be of a level you can cast and it must be in the school of divination or necromancy. The chosen spell counts as a bard spell for you, but doesn't count against the number of bard spells you know. Once you perform the ritual, you can't do so again until you start a long rest, and you know the chosen spell until you start a long rest. So our limiting factors with this feature are how many people we can get to sit with us, our proficiency bonus, and divination and necromancy. Divination is not known for its fight winning spells. Divination is an information gathering school, which I think is underrated but just keep that in mind that it's not going to be giving you those fight winning spells and necromancy is it tends to be underrated let's pretend we're sixth level when we first get this right we have a proficiency bonus of three so we can get up to a third level spell so we need two people to help us with this hopefully our party does let's assume they do so we can get third level spells maximum of divination and necromancy and there are some pretty cool spells here in necromancy we have revivify which if our allies aren't there with revivify now we have it and that's a huge deal so that can actually be game changing we have Summon Undead. That's a fantastic spell. 
cards aren't summoning super often, and so this gives us a summon. That's really cool. That's unusual. And on the divination side, we can pick up Clairvoyance here. Clairvoyance is a fantastic information gathering spell, but Tongues, on top of that, Tongues, situationally, we don't want to be taking that as a barb, but situationally, Tongues can be amazing, and the fact that we can just pull it out. That's just the, the tip of the iceberg of what we can do with this feature. We can eventually get to six level spells, and we didn't even look at second or first level spells, so it's there's a lot of flexibility here. I'd say standard, you probably take Summon Undead. If there's no one with Revivify, you probably take Revivify. If you need some information, you can do some things here. It's a weird feature, and I think is complicated on first look, and it is. It can go deep. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but I think there's also some simple choices that can go a long way. Our capstone feature that we get at level 14 is Mystical Connection. You now have the ability to nudge the spirits of Tells from beyond towards certain Tells. Whenever you roll on the spirit tells table, you can roll the dice twice and choose which of the two effects to bestow. If you roll the same number on both dice, you can ignore the number and choose any effect on the table. So this just gives us advantage on our spirit table so we can ignore some of the worst ones and just makes us more likely to want to use our bardic inspiration for this. I really like this because not only does it make that particular feature stronger, it also incentivizes us to use it more, and I think that's the most flavorful part about the, the College of Spirits. So, what is my conclusion? on the College of Spirits. I think it's fantastic. It really hits a lot of cool mechanical notes, and it really, really nails flavor notes for me. I think the, the Tells from Beyond especially can have so much storytelling potential. I just think that's fantastic, and it mixes your party together and gets them involved. But just outside of all the cool things it does, mechanically speaking, we're a little bit better at healing, we're a little bit better at blasting which in my mind is more like our cantrips get improved, which is great. We're going to be using cantrips often. I think that's a wonderful thing to have. Outside of that, our six level feature gives us some extra versatility that we can use to fit whatever our party needs. We can bring in some cool spells like summon undead. We can fit in as a healer or a cleric if we don't have one to, to get that revivify off. We can be more of an information gatherer. It really lets us be flexible. That is the key word. Bards are meant to be flexible, but because we have to commit to our spells in a lot of ways we're not and this spirit session really opens us up to be more flexible so i think that's kind of my end conclusion we're a little bit better at blasting we're a little bit better at healing we're a little bit more flexible and we have this really cool flavor i would say that where eloquence was a very natural bard for a beginner i'd say college of spirits is a very natural bard for someone who's more advanced at playing DD. i think you're going to get a lot of reward out of rolling on the spirit table and figuring out how to use those tales wisely. Sounds like a really fun time to me. Now this is my take on the College of Spirits. I would like to hear yours in the comments down below. I'm doing all sorts of deep dives. You can check out our deep dives playlist here. We're D&D Daily. We release new D&D content all the freaking time. If you love D&D, we are your spot. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.